I think there are, there are two really fascinating things about, um, about human evolution that we have yet to really fully get to grips with. And one is the evolution of cooking. Whenever cooking happened, it must have had absolutely monstrous effects on us because cooking enormously increases the quality of the food we eat and it enormously increases the range of food items that we can eat. And we all know that food quality and food abundance are key variables in understanding animal ecology. And the amazing thing is that at the moment there is no conventional wisdom that says when cooking evolved. And yet, you know, social anthropology and all sorts of conventional wisdom says, yeah, humans are the animal that cook. We distinguish ourselves from the rest of the world because they eat raw stuff and we eat cooked stuff. The, the best that anthropology can do at the moment is to say, maybe sometime around 250, 300,000 years ago, uh, cooking uh, really got going because there's evidence of earth ovens uh, archaeologically. Well, fine, but I mean, long before earth ovens came along, we must have learned to cook. And you would think that cooking would be associated with things like evidence in the body of the food being easier to digest, such as mm, smaller teeth and um, uh, maybe the rib cage uh, getting a little bit smaller as the size of the stomach uh, gets smaller, and the jaw getting smaller. And there's only one time in a human evolution when all that happens, and that is uh, that's a 1.9 million years ago with the evolution of the genus Homo. And I think that it's uh, there we must look for thinking about when cooking occurred. And then when cooking happens, it completely changes the way that the animal exploits its environment because instead of moving from food patch to food patch uh, and eating as they go or eating in the food patches that they find, now for the first time you have to accumulate food and put it somewhere and sit with it until it's cooked. It might take 20 minutes, it might take half an hour, it might, it might take several hours. And the effect of that is that all of a sudden, there's a stealable food patch. And once you've got a stealable food patch, that means that life being what it is, somebody's going to come along and try and steal it. And I think that what this means is that you have to think about a, a, a producer-scrounger dynamic in which you've got individuals producing and individuals scrounging, and that probably females were the producers and males were the scroungers, and once you've got males bigger than females, 50% bigger by the time uh, we're talking around two million years ago, then uh, uh, the effects on the social system would be large. And, and really, I think what we've got to think about is the idea that, that once you have females uh, ready to make a meal by collecting food and cooking it, then they're vulnerable to having that food taken away by the scroungers, the big males who find it easier not to go and collect the food themselves or cook it, but just take it once it's ready. And therefore, they need protective bonds in order to protect themselves from thieving males. And this is, I think, the origin of the male-female pair bond. Well, that's a, that's a huge topic, the cooking topic, that is virtually completely neglected. And whatever view you take about cooking, you have to say it's a problem that needs to be addressed.